This is International Peace App Challenge. It's happening from the roof of the world. Namaste. Namaste from Nepal. joining us this weekend on Earth and in Space. We're really excited about what's going to happen over the next 48 hours. NASA has a long history of exploring new frontiers in science and technology. My expectation of this program is that, first of all, we have great people coming together to have fun and they're working together in teams and with partners around the world to work on applications to make a meaningful difference. It's just fantastic to be here in Kathmandu and share in the enthusiasm with everybody here. The 2014 edition of Space App Challenge in Kathmandu is going pretty well. People started coming right from at 8 in the morning and you see by now people are already organized in teams or they are organized. They're kind of working in different hardware, software, uh, visualization related projects. And the other fact is like this time we have relatively very new uh, people coming to hackathons. So most of these people are students who have not had exposure to hackathons, right? And we also have commitment from different organizers saying that they really want to continue the uh, implementation of the projects that are relevant, you know? So I think uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm very excited to be part of this NASA Space Apps Challenge. As you can see from here, there are like 61 people working on 16 different projects trying to solve the challenges that is being posted in the NASA Space Apps website. I think it's a very unique opportunity for all of us to be able to be part of this global event. It's actually happening in 90 plus cities, like in more than 50 or 60 different countries at the same time. And we're seeing a lot of innovative projects, a lot of innovative ideas here. We are very glad to see a number of applications which are very relevant to what we are trying to do. And as she has already mentioned, maybe you can come up with ideas where a number of these applications can be can combined into a larger project where you can see some real world applications develop as an outcome of what we have done in the last two days. Basically, our system uh, consists of uh, of hardware and software part. In hardware part, it will consist of uh, two sensors, that is humidity and a temperature sensor. And basically, it fits. Uh, th there will be multiple types of uh, those sensors in multiple places, so that they can cooperate like a, a like a uh, micro micro net uh, communication. And from these accumulated data, uh, uh, there will be a server, and they will feed their data to a server. Our project is uh, mapping the gravity over the Earth and what we did is like we took out the data, elevation data from the internet and like we used the uh, geographic lib and like we compile it then get the generated data, gravity data for the, for the Earth using the latitude, longitude and the altitude then we map it into the uh, globe. Uh, we are going to build a uh, uh, prototype of the robotic device uh, that is actually uh, uh, carry the solar panels and uh, move uh, some distance. The distance can be controllable and uh, the, uh, whenever it uh, detects the sunlight and it stops the uh, stop and uh, and it start to rotate the panel in order to face the sunlight. Uh, the even in the summer days uh, the uh, incident uh, light the uh, light uh, to heat the um, the probability of light to heat the uh, solar panel is even lesser than the uh, five hours that means uh, the there is uh, some uh, scarcity of uh, energy uh, for this uh, scenario our project uh, is definitely helps so when you take you have 2007 uh, you can get the mean max and minimum temperature of that year. So we've only passed 10 years right now. So, 
and the feature is that so you can get information about other places like location, latitude, longitude, and latitude. This can be done in our database. So unfortunately, our satellites cannot map these areas with their sensors about uh, people having uh, real life problems like. Uh, uh, employment or uh, uh, or education or education uh, illiterate, illiteracy problems and uh, uh, problems like that. So to address this, uh, we have come up with the uh, concept of crowdsourcing. People will uh, use the concept of GPS to put a red alert on our maps. So we can send specific commands to control the robot. Uh, for example, we can make it go forward. We can make it stop and uh, we can make it turn in certain directions. The main reason behind I am in this second edition of uh, Hackathon is um, I am uh, <coughs> quite impressed with the first edition of this program uh, where I get um, a new platform for exploring my uh, knowledge that I have gone, that I have uh, <coughs> Uh, gained in my uh, semesters of uh, um, <coughs> university. Uh, I didn't have such a platform to explore my knowledge uh, rather than to uh, write on the exam papers. Uh, this was a quite uh, nice platform for uh, the developers like us uh, who not only explore our knowledge but also get the inputs from various other related fields inside, uh, <coughs> inside the community of the developers. We have a great experience in this hackathon. Actually, it gives us exposure to the different kinds of persons like developers and engineers, technologists, so we can learn how to network, how to collaborate with them. The International Space App Challenge uh, is helping me and my team to part two, to take to express our talent in a global pat platform and, and of course, uh, <coughs> In this in this hackathon, we we are able to meet with our developers, programmers, share our ideas, and imagine certain things which we we we, we wouldn't have been able to imagine when if we were alone. I'm enthused by the level of participants here, and also what we have seen over the last two days is a lot of innovation, creativity, imagination, and also the hard work of the young minds in Nepal. I'm so pleased to see people are working together in a common challenge that the society at large is facing, and how space technology, innovation, uh, science, and technology are being used to address some of the pressing challenges that we see in our day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day problem. The main thing that uh, struck me while I was uh, going through your presentation was that uh, what would happen if we could combine some of these uh, application products that you have come up and build one or two applications, no? Like somebody has uh, used crowdsource to, uh, again, uh, um, map out uh, the wetlands, others have developed alert system, somebody has developed Google a map interface. Now, if we could combine two or three such cases and, and come up with a really good uh, application that, that would be meaningful for the public. Although we have won the winner's question already, there is a lot to be done and this system is far from over. We need to make it more interactive and we need to be able to upload images and other things that will make the processing much easier. So yeah, there is much to be done. Yeah, I am also pretty much ex excited and I want to thank my team uh, for all these uh, outcomes. And similarly, we are also expecting some supports from the municipal level or the concern authority so that this app can be implemented in the real life. 
and we had started with a small concept of uh, Lean City and it ends in this way and we are very much uh, happy about that. We are very excited to go in an international level. Uh, we are a small group and although we have a small concept but the small concept are the one that can change the world. This is the thing that we have in mind right now.